So welcome, everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. It is January the 27th in 2022. The topic for this evening is wellness. And um, I picked this topic because about a little over two weeks ago, I started feeling ill. And although I consider my own symptoms to be rather mild as compared to some of the other people that I've, I've heard of that, are, that were sick around the same period of time, um, because I, like in truth, there were actually only about three days out of the, the last, um, let's say 15, 17 days, <clears throat> that I was really ill by the definition, by my own definition. There were only about three days that I was really so ill that I can't take care of myself. I just have to be in bed all the time for the, those three days. And outside of that, just once that, it, that is done, um, the rest of the time I was able to do a lot of what I used to do around the house. I was able to cook food for myself. I was able to do, to, you know, make my bed, all, all those simple things that I was well enough to do those for myself. And even though I have symptoms, I was, well, mostly I was coughing up phlegm, but um, other than that, I, it was just three days, really bad days. And then other than that, it is really about getting my strength up, back up, and also um, just getting to the point where I feel myself and vibrant again. <coughs> Excuse me. And so while I was... Um, on, on my road to recovery, I kind of have a, some, some time on my hands to think about why I got ill. Um, why? Because I don't get ill. I, I just don't. Um, usually, I, it was like the last time I was really ill to the extent that, um, let's say, I some discomfort yes um occasionally when the when the energies are really strong coming in I may, I may feel my head a little heavier than normal um and then there may be some days when i feel a little more sluggish than others but most of the time though to for me to really get to be so ill that i have to stay in bed not even for three days even for half a day it's like unheard of for me. So that's why like I, I, I really know that I have to look into why I got ill because there has to be a way. There has to be a reason why. I, I don't believe that um, it's a virus. I mean, yes, a virus is kind of a contributing factor, but it's um, our body is such a miraculous machine is so wonderful that no matter what kind of virus, as long as there are ways, other ways that our body can handle and, and process the energies that's coming in, then it is not inevitable for our body to get sick. It really, that's, that's, that's really how my own experience of my own body is. I'm not saying that that's true for everyone. It's just, it's true for me. I don't get ill, period. So when I do get ill though, it's for a reason. And I know that. So I've had some time to really look into why I got ill and also to um, try to learn the lessons of why um, I got myself into a, a corner that illness was the, the, the response that my body took in order to um, 
facilitate me to process the energies that my body is, is working through. So um, let me see. So let's see. So the first thing I that came to me was that I like I thought I was under the 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 assumption that I was really taking care of my body. Um, a lot of the, however, when I really have a some time to take a look at my food choices prior to getting ill. It's been a while that I've kind of gotten into a pattern of making food choices that are not entirely based on the best, let's say the best um, nutritional support for my own body. And, and um, not that I, the food that I, I was eating was bad, it's just they're not bad. It's just that they don't support my body nutritionally as effectively as I could have. And a lot of the times I make food choices more for reasons other than nutritional than value. So, so then the first lesson after I, I've kind of taken a, a look at or the 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 food choices that I've made for, it's not just one or two days or one or two weeks that it's been maybe since I moved to, so, so it was maybe about two, three months already. Since I moved to this location, the new location that I'm at in right now, it's um, that shift, that shift has really impacted how my body can respond in in a better way so first lesson learned was to recognize the psychological reasons behind my food choices and also to find other ways to handle my emotions in healthier healthier method so that I can free up my own um, ability to be able to make food choices that really supported my body's need rather than to make food choices that supported my emotional needs. So that was first lesson learned. And it was, I wouldn't say it's a profound lesson, but it, it was a good lesson for me to learn. And it's something that really took me, it, it really took hindsight for me to learn this because if I look at it on the surface, um, I'm still eating food that can be argued as being nutritional. It is just that it's not nutritional to support my body. So, and as I was looking harder into the psychological reasons why I make my food choices, I also come face to face with my, I would say, lack of connection to my own emotions. Because I, I was making emotional choices on, on food and I didn't even consciously I'm not even consciously connected to those feelings, those emotions that were fueling, um, that's making me make those food choices that somehow impacted my, my health negatively. So, so that there was another um, big learning curve about being able to connect to my own emotions. Um, I, I really know that I am pretty good at, let's say, not being not connected to my own emotions. For example, I rem I, when I was looking at, you know, so 
I, I'm not disconnected. I'm not connected to my own emotions. So what emotions were there that needed to be connected to? So one of the, 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 the overwhelming emotions that I tapped into was this, I would say, feeling of anger around government overreaching, while at the same time, I felt powerless to do something about it. And um, so it's not just, it's not just about anger. It is this combination of anger and inability to, or perceived inability to resolve this anger that is really energetically supporting this illness. And, and I really did feel that this is maybe not the, the, the most important contrib contributing factor to why I, I, I fell ill, but at least it was part of the contributing um, factors in it. <clears throat> And then after I made that this discovery, it was like, so how do I create a solution to this? And of course, the, the, the good news is that the illness itself created a solution for me naturally, because I actually took a lot, it took a lot of energy for normally, it, it takes a lot of energy I use a, up a lot of energy to tone down my emotional responses, meaning that, um, if for example, if I felt um, certain emotions when I'm with other people, I, for whatever reasons, I would most of the time make the choice to I would say disconnect from feeling those emotions and um, project a certain persona um, to, to, to other people rather than just being me all the time and just showing up with those e emotions and feeling those emotions in the moment that I do a lot of maneuvering in very unconscious and some, well, most of the times unconscious, but sometimes conscious way to um, disconnect from those emotions. So the, the, so that, that amount of energy that I normally use to tone down my emotions because of my, well, compromised state, let's say weakened state, that amount of energy was not available for me to tone down my emotions, which means that I was able to experience the full range of my emotions and feel it in real time for the last little while. And um, that's why sometimes I would fall apart. Um, it, it's very little things would be able to trigger me to the, uh, when I feel sadness or anger, I would feel it right away. I wouldn't, um, like, there is, the filter is gone. And I really feel like, like, for example, this afternoon, um, the, when I ordered takeout, instead of putting it right to the door, which was my instructions, the, the person put it, um, there, there is a, a, a table just um, <clears throat> that is in, in my front porch. So the person put it there and I really felt pissed <laughs> right away. And I was like, oh, okay, yes, this is, this is really feeling it real time. I did not try to manage myself and just, so that, that was, um, that, that is my experience in the last little while, <laughs> excuse me, is that this being 
instantly connecting to and experience my own emotions in real time, not in delayed mode. Oh, I'm going to think this over. And when um, there's nobody around, then I will process it. None of that anymore because I don't have time. I don't have energy to do that. So that was the solution. And um, and I'm not sure where, where the people from now on it's going to like the new me, but this is something that I, I want to get used to instead of expanding so much energy to kind of manage my own emotions. Um, so that is the second lesson learned. Um, second le lesson learned is it's a little bit interesting is that I didn't, I didn't, apart from learning the lesson that I, I put out so much energy to manage my own emotions or to create a separation between feeling my emotions in real time, the, the, the lesson that I also learned as well is that I'm always being supported. It's just that sometimes the support can look like an illness in that moment. So it is because of this illness that all of a sudden um, I have to drop a lot of the filters that I've been spending a lot of energy to, to put up. And now that, that all, and that is part of what needed to shift. Um, whether it is from my soul's point of view or from my, my body's wellness point of view, is that enough is enough. Why do you need to expend so much energy trying to always play catch up with your own emotions? Just feel it. Just connect with it and um, deal with it in real time, feel it in real time and also let it go or whatever it is that needed to shake out, do it in real time. Because when, when I can do that, I can actually stay in the moment rather than always catching up to my own feelings. So first, so the second lesson learned is, yeah, I'm always supported. And support can sometimes come in the <laughs> in the form of an illness in the moment. <clears throat> and then one more thing that I actually learned from this is the third lesson learned is the importance of self-acceptance. So the reason why I um, put so much energy into managing my own feelings, um, so my to my own um, reasoning is that you know when I'm when I'm let's say being with a client, is that I don't like if they say something that trigger me, I don't want to um, you know fall fall apart right in front of them, I want to be able to um, manage myself so that I can be, I can hold space for them to have their process. And so that is really a lot of the, the, uh, uh, the reasons behind why I want to, I, I felt the need that I need to manage my own emotions. And so the third lesson learned is, is the importance of self-acceptance is that I also need to look at all of these beliefs about why I needed to be a certain way, why I need to show up a certain way, and, um, and also take a look at that made up image of myself which is which really made it hard for me to feel emotions, my, feel my own emotions in real time, and that I have it that I need to be a certain 
kind of person. And I feel I will be able to, um, I feel that this is really best to, to do that, to, to have all of these management systems set up so that um, when, so that I would deal with my own internal inconsistencies when I'm by myself at a later time. It, it is just that this, this create a, a feedback loop that makes it impossible for me to be in the moment because I'm always trying to catch up. And yes, in a certain way, it may be looked at as being more spiritual to be in a certain way, to come across as a certain way. But the, the, the conundrum is that to be truly spiritual means you have to be in the moment, to be who you are under all circumstances and to really look at feeling everything and being with everything about yourself in the moment and that is really accepting the truth of who I am in this moment. And there are so, and I have so many different reasons, shoulds, should nots that I have placed up for myself that somehow I lost sight of this. And that in no small way has really slowed me down in terms of my spiritual growth. And that was just, it just hit me. Oh, I thought I was being spiritual in order to, you know, be always look, feel calm and in a certain way. But it comes, it came at, um, at a cost. And the cost is getting to the point where I cannot ignore it anymore. That is the, the cost is now, outweighing the benefits and, and so that was really this there was this was really a big aha moment and it all stems from accepting myself even when I am falling apart emotionally is to be able to accept myself as that rather than trying to um, put up a, an image that is not true, is that my tolerance for being not true to myself is now dropping and dropping. So it is part of it is is really the importance of self-acceptance. But then part of it is also to discover the true self as well. Because, well, if my true self is somebody who falls apart all the time, then that's who I am. And if I try to not look like that in, in front of other people, then I'm really deceiving other people in some way. And there's always a price to pay when you try to deceive other people. And also, and the, the, the worst price is that it's not that you just be able to deceive other people. I think the worst price that I may pay is that I deceive myself. So that was something that really hit me very hard. So it's not just accepting myself, but the willingness to look at who I truly am when I'm not trying to be someone else. So this idea of reclaiming who I am and being okay with who I am. And maybe who I am is just somebody who falls apart. Um, 
with whatever, with any sort of emotional trigger. And that's somebody that I have to accept that I love, even though I am this you know, flawed human being that falls apart all the time. So these are great lessons that I have learned. I would say lessons that really took being ill for all this time for me to learn because yes, I do know that you know, self-acceptance is important, but I didn't know how important it really is becoming until I really got to the part where I have to be taken out of commission for all this time in order for me to look at and observe what it is that I do in my life that is impacting myself energetically and not in a good way. So these are great lessons to learn. And I'm still trying to learn, I'm still getting to learn those lessons that is going to assist myself in getting back to wellness because it's part of my belief that when I'm, when a person is true to themselves, when a person is really being in the moment with themselves, they would be able to eat whatever it is that the body needs in that moment to be able to handle the emotions in that moment and be able to run an efficient energetic system in your body that don't just prevent you from being ill. It actually can elevate you emotionally, spiritually to the next level, to a level that um, is not, that you don't even know is possible in this moment because There's been so many layers and layers of trying not to be myself. And I am just scratching that, that surface into looking at who I truly am. And, and when I truly become who I am, then energetically, there is no more blockage. And I don't know how I'm going to get there. I don't know when I'm going to get there. But I do know now that this is something that I needed to do. It is a um, mission critical. Not because um, I, I, I would say that most importantly, I think it's really important to for our own spiritual um, development to get to the point where energetically we are free. We become free agent that we can freely influence our own energy. We can freely unblock ourselves. So this is part of the, what I would like to share with all of you about lessons learned in illness and also I would say a direct path to wellness is really to come back to oneself wherever that may be and whomever that may be is when you find that path back to you back to yourself, then um, this, we are mind, body, so complex. And when we, like I can do all of the things about, you know, eating right, um, exercising, all of those. But if I have so many barriers to being myself, then that is going to impact the, the mind-body complex in a very 
I would say, in a very tangible way. And it is part of being well is to not just look at the, the body, not just look at the spiritual part of it, not just look at the, the mental part of it, but be able to combine all three and be able to flow as a unifying force between all three of the parts that make up a human being. So that's all I have to share tonight.